Roosevelt called them the lungs of the earth. Robert Frost was inspired by them and Sting is fighting to save them. March 21st is the International Day of Forests and we thought we'll take a trip around some of the forests of the world today. As Sri Lanka continues to destroy her forests in the name of development, our very own Singharaja may lose its extraordinary biodiversity, which includes 60% of endemic trees and 830 endemic species. But let's celebrate our forests anyway, or what's left of it. Welcome to Kaleidoscope with me, Savitri Rodrigo. We heard from three powerhouse creative forces on day three of the Cargill's International Women's Day Festival of the Changemakers, which is a one-of-a-kind festival partnered by the UNFPA in collaboration with Taro Villas and our program, Kaleidoscope. We've captured some of those moments of those discussions in Seligo Life Let's Talk. Plus, we find out how famous the ocean strainer has become beyond our shores and how women in the Nora Elia horse racing community are to be empowered. That's on our People's Bank News capsule. While on Singer Life in 60, be prepared to be dazzled by metal. Plus, of course, lots of vignettes from the week that was. Did you know that forests are home to 300 million people around the world? Like this, the Congo Basin Forest, the largest forest in Africa, about 1.4 million square miles and home to about 40 million people. With that fun fact, we move into Kaleidoscope Snapshot. Reflecting the effects of the pandemic on the worldwide economy, Sri Lanka's economy contracted by 3.6% in 2020. Some hope from Fitch ratings, they expect a recovery in all three triple C rated Asia Pacific sovereigns Laos, the Maldives, and Sri Lanka. The Sri Lankan rupee hit a new low when it crossed the 200 per US dollar mark this week. Sensetronic opens Sri Lanka's first accredited fully automated medical face mask production facility in Katagoda. The Sustainable Future Group becomes South Asia's first to be accredited for product carbon footprinting. Kalapula, Sri Lanka's annual open art fair, went online for the very first time. And the world's oldest living person will be an Olympic torchbearer in the relay this year. She even got a new pair of sneakers for the event. She is 118. Celebrating international forests on Kaleidoscope today, the Sundarbans is the world's biggest mangrove forest, straddling the border of Bangladesh and India and is named after the Sundari tree. Around 50% of the forest constitutes water. And speaking of water, we begin our People's Bank News capsule with a story about water and the scourge of plastic. When MAS Holdings launched the ocean strainer some months ago, we at Kaleidoscope were quite relieved at the prospect of less plastic in the ocean. Plastic gets washed up in two ways, from the Indian subcontinent and Africa on both sides of the island and from inland waterways. And then that plastic gets into drains which goes into canals and then into the oceans. Advisory Board Member for Sustainability, Sarinda Onambua from MAS Holdings, talks about the solution and how the ocean strainer is poised to go beyond Sri Lanka's shores. So we thought we'll try and find a solution there. And our team kind of worked together with some, um, um, some technology providers. And what we were able to do is come up with this trapping device that we tried out in the Velvata Canal. And as you know, that, that has been quite successful now. It has been in effect for almost six months very successful and what we are now doing is trying to invite people to join us in this to try and put it into as many canals as possible not only canals we are even experimenting with rivers at the moment there are people interested in putting it across the colony there are some challenges because for example if there's boat traffic how do we move it and you know lift it or whatever it may be so we are working on those as well but what has been encouraging us is there have been a lot of people who have stepped in, a lot of corporates that have stepped in after we invited people to join us as far as Fiji. So Australia right now, we have some queries from Fiji. There are queries There are queries coming around from all over the world to try and use this technology to trap the, uh, the garbage before it goes out. So it has been an amazing success for us. The bearish run persisted on the Colombo stock market this week with the indices continuing to dip. The old share price index was down by 4.6% and the average daily turnover dropped to 1.04 billion rupees. We are approaching the one-year anniversary of Black April, 
when oil prices fell by more than 50 US dollars per barrel in a single day and WTI crashed past historic lows. In contrast, this year, oil prices have rebounded and are now trading at close to 64 US dollars per barrel. The price of gold was at 1,735 US dollars per ounce, below the 2,036 US dollar highs seen in August 2020. The horse racing industry in Sri Lanka has generally not encouraged females, whether it's handlers, groomers, table hands, jockeys, trainers, or even race officials. One woman decided to change that. A rider herself who took on the daunting task of riding from Vavunia to Jaffna in 2002 on the Peace for Children project, Nihara Jayatilaka, the president of the Royal Turf Club and the first and only female to head a turf club in Asia, has decided to get the young girls from the New Aurelia horse racing community into the fray. Being in the horse industry for so long, I thought it's only a natural extension that we, we extend this to the uh, the females as well because it's so far been a male dominated fraternity and uh, therefore we have just implemented this uh, scheme for the women uh, or the young girls in and around especially New Aurelia from the horse uh, related families you know for generations some of these families have been in the horse industry so their livelihood depends on it. So why not extend it to the females? The women uh, have more consistency, uh, they are more balanced, um, and, and that will be a boon to the, to the, to the industry. When you show the fact that there, have been, there are female jockeys in other countries and they, they have performed very well and they have excelled in what they do, uh, the families will, will adapt. The largest ever Lego set is the 9036-piece Colosseum, the famous Roman amphitheatre in Italy. When completed, it is nearly a foot high and nearly two feet wide and two feet deep. When this Russian ballerina heard that a construction project was threatening a unique natural habitat, she embarked on an artful protest. She performed Swan Lake in freezing temperatures in the Gulf of Finland to save the bay. We'll be back with some creative powerhouses. Amina Hussein, Leila Gonadu, and Thaji Dias on Selinko Life. Let's talk. With Selinko Life Pension Saver, Sri Lanka's premier retirement plan, start planning for a retirement today. Selinko Life, a relationship for life. Women in the arts use their creative spaces in diverse ways. They narrate their stories in a tapestry that is seen by the world, whether it is the written word, in a work of art or in performance, whether in skeins of colour or in stark black and white. Each work of art is individualistic and unique, deep in context and wide in concept, and each has its own story to tell. Our discussion with the creative forces at the Cargill's International Women's Day Festival of the Changemakers was wide-ranging. We've taken some questions from the audience today to give you a glimpse of what our three powerhouse creative forces had to say. Here's author and publisher of Pereira Hussein Publishing House, Amina Hussein, interdisciplinary artist Leila Gonadua, and principal dancer of the Chitrasena Dance Company, Thaji Dias, on Selling Life. Let's talk. How important do you think being artist is right now in the car with the current state of affairs of the country? Uh, I think yes it is very important uh, to use art um, uh, in this time to heal and that's what we do that is what uh, dance is all about it it began as a healing and we continue to do it even on stage as a healing for people. You cannot force something so because Writing is very is a creative process. It what grips you. It what uh, what you want to devote your attention to. I will say for the Ibn Battuta book, my because because all the while while I was traveling in within Sri Lanka, it struck me that my encounters were so multicultural with every with all the people I met and the the situation that was happening you know, with the ethnic uh, tension I will say between the Sinhalese and the Muslims this time did not play out in my travels that I felt I needed to put it in my epilogue what happened was in the afterward 
while I had written it and it was in editing, the Easter bombings went off. The Easter bombings shook me as a Muslim more than anything else. Definitely, I think artists do have a platform to, you know, we win uh, their political stance. But it has to happen organically. When you look at art, it all depends on how you perceive the work and how you kind of, you know, take it forward and how you kind of act on it, you know, in a very individual sense. So, yes, I think all, most artists, their work is political. Uh, though we might not necessarily think so. Um, don't you think that in the current context of what's happening here, the creative space is squeezed for everybody, male, female or, or whatever. But maybe women have a bigger role to play in, the, in a time when creativity and space and freedom and expression is suppressed for everyone creativity anyway can come out in different different ways you don't necessarily have to be an artist it, it you know it sort of permeates everything you do so you're from your thinking to how you engage in something so we do um, I, I would like to think that most artists have a wider worldview and we are more open to things people look at subjects in a different way individually and so everybody's everybody's view is legitimate even a racist's view is legitimate even a religious uh, uh, you know someone who is religious the chauvinist is legitimate but just as much then everybody else's view has to be legitimate and has to be respected and they have to have the freedom to say what they have to say in today's climate I feel that is lacking more than the yeah more than the men and women divide it is what you're able to say what you're not able to say uh, something we've always had is the pioneers in the field have always been male uh, so not just dance but in music or um, in uh, drama and after my grandmother uh, started dancing it's uh, you know, somewhat been easier for all the females who kind of came into the dance to start, you know, creatively, um, you know, bringing out their ideas and working with other males in the same field. And uh, so um, I think and I hope with time that more females will actually start uh, you know, creating in the field. Art in any form cannot be forced, but it's always thought-provoking and can be the universal language when all others fail. Thank you to our creative forces for sharing their insights on Selinko Life. Let's talk. With Selinko Life Pension Saver, Sri Lanka's premier retirement plan, start planning for your retirement today. Selinko Life, a relationship for life. And we'll be back with singer Life in 60 with some metal dazzle. This forest in Queensland, Australia, the Daintree Forest, is believed to have survived over a million years. And while sustaining forests is key to the planet's survival, there are young people who are trying their best to give Mother Nature a breather, promoting upcycling, recycling and reusing. Take the case of Isuru Jayashan. He uses discarded metal to create these beautiful masterpieces under his brand Elysian Ianua. Check it out on Singer Life in 60. Isuru Jayashan from Candy makes wire wrap jewellery using scrapped copper wire and brass wire. It started off as a hobby in 2007 and transformed into a business. His jewellery is marketed online on Instagram as well as at Good Market, Hippie Market and at art festivals. Each piece is special and each unique, carrying that message of reusing waste to make a person dazzlingly beautiful.
weren't those just dazzling? Beauty with a purpose. Thank you, Isuru, for sharing the craft of your beautiful jewellery on Singer Life in 60. We are on our final day of the Kargil International Women's Day Festival of the Changemakers next Monday, which Kaleidoscope is partnering with Tharu Villas. We've had some super amazing sponsors on board and our last day is all about disruption of the positive kind. There will be two sessions, three young women, Ape founder Himali De Silva, Good Life Accelerator founder Randula De Silva and Good Market MD Achala Samaradivakara in session one and two young men who've disrupted comedy in Sri Lanka are in session two. That's Gehan Block and Dino Correra. Last call for passes. And of course, we'd love to hear from you. Write into Kaleidoscope Weekly one at gmail.com or simply scan the QR code Get into our channel and subscribe or follow us on Facebook and Instagram. The weekend is nigh. Don't forget to don your mask and sanitize. I always carry one of these handy Amami hand sanitizers in my bag, which helps keep me immensely safe. So don't forget to join us again next week. But hold on to this thought with this kaleidoscope takeaway. The world's forests are a shared stolen treasure that we must put back for our children's future. Desmond Tutu